Hey guys, welcome back to Lunatic Astrology. I am your astrologer, Lori Lothian, opening up a bottle of Perrier water or whatever. I'm in the middle of a move and my house is chaos. Paintings are off walls and everything else. And in the middle of this chaos, we're talking about Uranus squaring, well, actually Saturn squaring Uranus. So they're moving toward each other, or, well, you know, kind of in the sky to make a uh, perfected square. And there's a lot of interesting stuff involved. Uranus is sitting, this is happening on June the 14th, the second square of the year. The first was February the 17th. And later on, is, on December the 24th, there'll be the third one. And then a partial one way down in like October of 2022. Now, the thing about these squares is they're game changing, right? They're like epochal energies of shift and Uranus is squaring Saturn uh, can bring huge changes to economic systems, to establish the quo, to farming, to banking, to a whole bunch of stuff like that. Now, we're going to look at all signs, so stay tuned for that. I'm going to very briefly touch on where this kind of earth-shaking, quaking, status quo disrupting, need to negotiate change is happening in your chart based on your rising sign. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about some of the cool asteroids participating on this particular iteration of Uranus and Saturn and square aspect to each other, perfecting or coming into perfection on June 14th, but you can feel it already. We're in the buildup. I'm recording on June the 11th and we'll be in the afterglow or after shake of it for at least a week or two after. Asteroid Wuhan, yes, Wuhan, there is an asteroid Wuhan, is sitting with Uranus in the sky at the time of this actual square. And also um, the asteroid Isis is pretty darn close as well to Uranus. Now. Isis is the uh, archetypal, you know, flood, flood the Nile, bring the fertility to the Nile Valley, but she's also associated with the repair of the broken, putting together Humpty Dumpty after he falls off the wall, <laughs> restoring brokenness, okay, it has to do with the story of finding the parts of her husband Osiris, so, and cobbling him back together after his bits were scattered to the winds, all right, so that Egyptian myth it, uh, brings to the idea of this Uranus at events squaring Saturn, something to do with restoration and reconstruction. But if it's Uranus, it's outside the box. It's not like, let's put it back together the way it used to be. We're not looking at like, oh, you know, let's just do it the old way. Uh, let's just continue the way we were going and put it all back the way it was. Give, let me give you an example. Um, with the 2008 subprime loan scandal and that a whole disaster in the um, equity markets uh, because of it, Things weren't done differently. Things were put back together the way they used to be. The Fed did quantitative easing and flooded the market with money and um, bailed out the banks. Well, what's happening now is the Fed is flooding the market with money, like quantitatively easing the pandemic drop in the markets. And, um, you know, there's money being printed and it's being done the old way and it's probably not going to work. We'll probably know that in November. I'll, I'll touch base to why November besides a dream I had about a triple witching day in the stock markets and a really, really intense correction. I think that's the triple witching in November uh, on a Friday. But before we go to that, that's another whole, another whole story. It is important to note that Uranus doesn't do it the old way. End of story for the collective and in your own life when we do the all signs. And he's on ISIS who wants to reconstruct what is broken, bring it, put it all back together but it'll have to come back together differently. And then with the Wuhan piece, with uh, Uranus also very, very close to the asteroid Wuhan in the sky right now. You know, Wuhan is both literally the epicenter of an epidemic, but it's also an asteroid that can represent or something um, very small becomes very big, you know, like a little virus gets maybe out of a lab <laughs> or out of a, out of a wet market. I tend to favor the lab, you know, if it, if it looks like a cigar, it's a cigar. Um, I, you know, parsimony, the most obvious uh, likely outcome of having a <laughs> gain of function research lab working on coronaviruses from bats and experimenting on them and having that pandemic come from that source of a bat coronavirus is very unlikely accidental like like meaningful coincidence no it's like probably what you think is what is is what it is and that will come to light of the next year so with wuhan and isis there it's very possible shock and awe is your iranian right your honest likes to bolt us with a big jolt of aha and it could be that shock and awe will look a little bit like okay it was a virus that got out of a lab and everyone's going to agree with that over the next few months secondly ufos you know, Uranus was pushing against Saturn, squaring Saturn. Saturn is God of status quo in Aquarius, wants things to stay the way it is. He's in his dignity. He's pretty strong there. He's got essential dignity being like 
found in his own home sign of Aquarius. Like he's at home, he's comfy, he's powerful. <laughs> and he wants to keep things the same. So he's pushing against Uranus who in Taurus, not comfortable in a fixed sign like Taurus, wants to bring change. So yeah, I'm not saying Uranus is weak or strong, he's just there, you know? Uh, earthquakes and things to disrupt the environment are very much possible with Uranus there as well. But I also would say UFOs. Why do I say UFOs? There's so much disclosure stuff that started out this year since February 17th with the beginning of, you know, that square, where now there's the, you know, 60 Minutes video and the, and the United States Senate has commissioned a report out in June, which is when the second square, to talk about what the heck those flying things are, the aerial phenomena, they have AEP, uh, unidentified aerial phenomena instead of UFO. But the idea is that that is gonna be front and center all the way through the end of the year. I mean, and because we're not done until like December and even to the end of 2022, expect a lot more disclosures and a lot more revelation in that area. I wouldn't be surprised if what you get in the Senate report, of course, is going to be um, a kind of a, a calming the masses version of what's really available to know. And by the end of the year, more of what's really available to know will be known. And will be very vindicating, by the way, for people like me who've seen UFOs in the sky twice. No, they were not stealth bombers. They were circular and they could move in all kinds of ways. Um, saucer-like <laughs> or whatever, and other people who for years have been scoffed at. All righty, um, what else can I say about this Uranus and Saturn combination from my little handwritten notes here? Because uh, there's a lot of other stuff going on in the sky at the same time with, with Venus and the Sun and um, Neptune. So I might bring that up when I look at the chart with you, but um, I just put a pen in my mouth. That's all I want to say. I think that's all I want to say for the Saturn square. Get those are broad brushstroke themes and Saturn square Uranus, Uranus square Saturn. Um, Uranus is moving um, retrograde now. And I think that's more or less about external shock and awe and more perceptual and revelatory shock and awe. Like, oh my God, UFOs are real. Or there's a spaceship that's, you know, stored at the Pentagon or from a UFO thingy. Or there's... Um, reveals in the financial markets or whatever. And then uh, Uranus direct is when we are way more likely to see externalized versions of shock and awe, okay? So let's go into the screen share and then we'll do all signs in a brisk format because I've got to see a client like I usually do. I try to wedge these little videos in between clients and um, here we go. Now, I don't know if you guys are seeing what I'm seeing. Let me open that to big size, yay. So I, I, I tossed a few things into the picture here besides the Saturn and the uh, Uranus piece. So you can see that Uranus at 13 degrees on the 14th, right? Is at th yeah, 13 and will square 13 degrees of Saturn or Saturn squaring actually applying towards that square to Uranus. And you know, Saturn's a faster moving planet. Now it's interesting because, uh, you know, Oh, <laughs> sorry, Uranus is going direct. Okay, oh my God, Saturn is going retrograde. That's what happens when you don't rehearse anything and just whipping it off the top of your mind. Um, okay, so Uranus will be retrograde in the fall during the November pass. That was what I was researching. So uh, the last one uh, in, the, in December, uh, Saturn will be retrograding then. All right, if my memory serves me. Okay, so, um, but anyway, what you see is these two in a com conversation on the 14th. And, you know, this little asteroid series, often it has to do with agriculture, food and food supplies. And she's the prosperity, bounty goddess of, goddess of things you would like harvest and, you know, all of that. And it's interesting, she was also the mother Demeter of Persephone. And that is an asteroid, or that is an archetype, I should say, Persephone, that has to do with abduction to the underworld and being a victim and the mother archetype saving the day. And, you know, this asteroid Proserpina is another version, Proserpina of Persephone. And it's interesting to me that Proserpina is sitting with Hygieia, the goddess of healing and health and hygiene, okay, in this chart, in a relationship here to this mother archetype. Proserpina is squaring her mother, her mother is squaring her near the Uranus, you know, activation point. And you know, it's possible that what this is showing us is something to do with a disruption in food supply. Um, and you know, the story of Ceres was that you know she was in mourning. Ceres or Ceres, I like to call Ceres. Ceres was in mourning, and so then everything withered for six months, and everything dried up, and there was no crops, and people were starving. And then when she 
finally agreed with Hades, the god of the underworld, to give her daughter a six months pass out of the underworld, uh, then Persephone slash Proserpina could come up off the ground again. What happened was we had the seasons of summer and the winter. And then we had a sort of a variation on the theme of just pure, barren, harsh world. <clears throat> because Ceres series is capable of parching us and giving us that kind of uh, grief with things that grow. Um, and she's squaring Persephone or per Prosopina over here in Leo. I'm suspicious of some kind of food chain supply disruption story showing up in, or food prices, inflation has already been showing to be escalated. So this doesn't have to be a disruption in the food supply, guys. It can be a disruption in the cost of food through inflation, which is why it's good to be on gold and silver as a hedge. <laughs> but this is not financial advice. I remember that I, disclaimer, do not take any advice from me for your health or finances. Um, all right, so what else? Um, 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 Venus is sitting in the sky over here in Cancer and she is in a lovely little sextile to Uranus, which is a harmonious flowing aspect pattern. And Uranus is in her house, right? On the day of this perfected event. And in fact, the day before on the, on the 13th, she'll be exactly a aspecting a perfect sextile to Uranus. And I find it interesting here as well to talk about why this could be a good thing. Um, now, so Uranus is often, um, again, something unexpected or sudden, but he's in Venus's house and Taurus is associated with currencies and money and Venus is associated with money. And possibly the sextile could be a change in stories around currency, like the US dollar suddenly takes off or, Crypto regains its footing, you know, because Bitcoin's down to thirty thousand dollars or so, which is a, a which is a serious uh, beyond a retraction, right? It's like a, a huge fifty percent drop from this year's highs. And so, I don't know. I think a sextile from Venus to Uranus and Taurus could be ameliorative or remedying that situation temporarily. And then, you know, Venus is on two positive stars, Canopus and Sirius, more importantly, Sirius. Sirius is uh, the dog star. It's about magic and mysticism. It's a lucky star. It can be associated with luck and prosperity. And that star is on the natal chart of the United States sun, all righty? So if you think about the time of this, you know, tomorrow, I mean, the 14th of June's perfected square, Venus is on Sirius, and that star is a part of the United States mythos. It's where the sun of the USA sits, if I remember correctly. And therefore, it's good for the United States to have Venus baking in a bit here and sextiling Uranus. I think it could be a, a very hopeful direction for equity markets, currency, currency, the US dollar going becoming stronger. I don't think this is um, going to last. The sextile is very soft, and I don't think this is a hard... Uh, a hard shift. I think this is temporary until we get to the fall. Just so you know, Mars is invisible um, in the sky by the end of this month and into all of the summer until the end of December. And Mars was a big disruptor causing the pandemic uh, in Babylonian tradition, God of Plagues. And I won't go to all of that. I did a video with a panel and you can find it in the in the bo bottom below in the playlist, which is really well done. I think so far we've, we've nailed it in our predictions, me and the astrology panel about um, the pandemic of 21 and where we think it goes. But I, I think that with Mars uh, invisible and he causes plagues <laughs> uh, basically from let's just say July through to the end of December, this is going to look like a softening on the plague story. But after he starts to become more and more visible uh, toward the very tail end of this year, early January of 2022, he may kick up a storm and cause some problems again. He's invisible, okay? Uh, because he is so close to the sun during these months ahead. Now, you can all, he's going to be reborn at the end of December. He's going to start afresh. What will he bring us? A new play? <laughs> or uh, you know, a new variant? Or will he calm down and go, okay, I, I did enough damage for you guys. Let's move to a war instead. You know, And m mark my words, it's going to be either a, a variant or a war that Mars will try to instigate more than likely sometime in 22. Now, and I have a lot of reasons to say that, but I don't want to spend time on that now. Um, anything else I want to say about the sky? Um, well, there's that, Ven that Venus piece is just the most important, I think, is going to bake in a little sweetness around the financial story. Um, sun is on chaos, the asteroid chaos at the time. <clears throat> you know, we all know what chaos is, <clears throat> but the asteroid chaos also has implications for um, 
Hmm. I think it's like seeing the big picture and um, let me just take a look at what this uh, software says about chaos. Oh, forget it. I'm not going to do that because as soon as I do, I lose my share with you guys. And now I can't even see where it went. I don't even know where the, the darn thing is. Okay, forget it. But just imagine that the sun is sitting on Fortuna, the fates, the fates, the spinners of fate, Fortuna, the asteroid of the fleeting ups and downs of fate and fortune and also on chaos. And that's not really a part of the Iranian story, right? The sun isn't talking to Uranus here, but that's just kind of in the sky at the time. So, you know, there's something about that that's kind of interesting to me. I, I think that's just gonna leave it at that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the all signs portion of the reading. What we're gonna look for, all right? Oh, I should say the sun too. On the day of the, of the perfected square, the sun is in a square to also Neptune on the side there. Um, that can be really intense energy, okay, but deception and illusion. But it, so what is what is going on behind the scenes that we don't know about? But it also can open psychic portals, okay, doorways of psychic perception and non-ordinary psychic events. So just keep that in mind. For a lot of us, um, people are telling me that they're having amazing like psychic dreams and awakenings to their spiritual talents and, and gifts right now, whether it's healing or psychic ability or whatever. And, you know, I just kind of feel it's part of the new era we're moving into. I'm not like a super new ager, guys. I am pretty well a Hellenistic astrologer, but I do know that we are moving into a part of the uh, path in the Milky Way. Our solar system has moved into a place where we have, uh, we're no longer shielded in a, a big, big cloud of gunk and we're getting a lot more uh, radiation, a different kind, gamma radiation, I think. Uh, as we move into, I think, the photon belt. I think that's how it goes. But I mean, there's something going on on the planet. You know, the human resonance is spiking all over the map. And um, I think it's changing how we operate as a species. Less on our prefrontal thinking cortex and more somewhere in a deep pineal gland reservoir of intuition and inner sight. That's my thought. All signs, we're just gonna start where we are because Virgo is up and it makes it easy for me not to have to change things around. All right, so like, hey, Virgo, sun, moon, and ascendant, especially rising sign. Everybody look for your rising sign first. So before I do that, check the description box below. I have a lot of stuff going on. Can't book with me till August now though. I'm full until then. Okay, so um, Virgo, sun, moon, and ascendant. And like and subscribe and comment and share. Help my channel grow, which has been growing finally in the last couple of months after being sort of like floating on steadfast nowheres bill for a year. Um, so the Virgo folk, um, so you're going to have some kind of your rod. I'm going to simplify this maybe for you. I don't like all the junk. We're going to keep the all signs to just the very bare bones story. Okay. We're just going to make it that way for simplicity. And then we don't have to look at everyone else in the sidelines. There. <laughs> so anyway, um, so you can see this is a ninth house Uranus. I bet you a lot of you Tor uh, Virgo, Sun, Moon, and Ascendants have had interesting jolts and disruptions around higher education, uh, ninth house theme, Fig figuring out your life purpose, your meaning of your life, Dharma, and also maybe with travel plans to foreign lands, and maybe some of you really have engaged with foreign land themes or publishing and book publications. Now, hey, you know, Uranus wants to bring change to this area of your life. Some of you may move to a foreign land by 2026 when he finishes his transit there, which he began in earnest in the spring of 2019. But it's certainly difficult if you're a student, like my daughter, Virgo Rising, to nail down what you want to major in. For instance, a lot of disruptive change in the educational story. Um, but, you know, this particular, uh, you know, square from Saturn is kind of going back over old ground from February 17th. You know, it's still the same story, but in retrograde Saturn motion now. Where in the idea of the work you do in the world and the health protocols that you use to stay healthy and the work routines and the work environment, are you having to break away from what you've done before and the way it has gone before? There will be a disruption with some kind of health protocol or some kind of regime for fitness or some kind of work protocol that is being called forth right now. And it is going to go back over some changes that were percolating in February or things that started in February. So keep that in mind, especially around February 17th. For, for the most part, the whole story of this year, as we come to this you know, end of the year, the last Saturn, um, December 24th Saturn um, opposite square to Uranus, is that you're trying to jolt into authenticity, you know, 
and be uh, more in alignment in some way with themes that have to do with ninth and sixth house storylines. Hmm. If you struggled with your health, the end of this year will bring breakthroughs. One of the things about Uranus, give or take, you know, anything from him, he does bring breakthroughs. So health breakthroughs are a narrative for all of 21 for a lot of the Virgo folk in the world. Virgo rising, especially. All right, so uh, Libra sun and moon and more so rising sign. You guys are having this sort of stuck energy of the status quo Saturn in your fifth house, by the way, until March of 2023. I mean, it's kind of consolidating and bringing legacy and perseverance and effort to your creative energies. If you're a writer or you're an artist, um, Saturn isn't fun here, okay? This is digging in, this is doing the hard work. However, it is worth it. So that's kind of going on, but this is also your children. You may feel constricted or restricted around your children, some of you Librans. And uh, you also may feel some frustration or some slowness or stagnation in your love story, especially romantic love affairs, not like committed long-term domestic stuff. I mean, love affairs, you know, madly, crazily in love. Uh-oh, Saturn's here. You could fall in love with an older person, but other than that, it's a little bit like hard work in love. And that is being jolted and disrupted in 21 as well by Saturn in your eighth house. Now that's spousal money. If you have a spouse, there could be some financial breakthrough from your spouse, thanks to Uranus in 21. And this is also bank loans and debts and inheritances. There's certainly an attempt, five and eight are both money houses in some ways. So five can be a speculative money, taking bets, placing, you know, making risky uh, investments and paying them, off, them paying off. Uranus in the eighth house can bring lots of good things to you from, you know, the money story as well. Suddenly, very suddenly, uh, something popping in your finances in 2021 in a very good way. But Uranus is jolting for a break away, right? Breaking away from old eighth house themes. Now, the eighth house theme can be occult mysteries and secrets and taboo topics like sex, death and all of that. And so certainly if there's, and secrets, right? So if there's secrets being kept by you or from you, uh, you know, then it, they definitely could jolt you and they may involve things to do with love affairs and children, okay, or some disclosures around money. And this is in play all year, but we're coming up to a critical juncture with to this week's um, office uh, square. Oh, okay, my software is just not moving. Am I moving by day? I want to move by hour. Oh, guys, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's funny, right? Moving by hour. Now I moved off the right degrees, but it's the same place. Scorpio, sun, moon, and rising sign. Um, here it comes. Second pass of the square between the disruptor and the status quo dude happening for you in your fourth house of home. And I'm trying to get comfortable because I am recovering from a hip problem. And it's almost better about standing because sitting sucks. So sorry, guys. So Scorpios, there is definitely something changing in your home. This could be a new home, a buying and selling a home, real estate. Saturn here is going to bring you some real standard uh, energy for home, like consolidating your home, building a home, establishing a home foundation. Uh, this will be in play until 2023. He's maturing you up regards to, to things to do with home and your family of origin, ancestral line stuff as well. Now, he is going back over old ground. Something in your home environment for Saturn is going to be readdressed that may have been up in February. As well, Uranus is very jolty in your love house of committed love story, business partnerships, but legal contracts too, negotiations and legal contracts. So for example, you could have a disruptive but exciting and jolty energy of being offered some kind of contract to buy your house or uh, to do the change in your home, uh, coming with legal negotiations and contract signings involved coming from the seventh house. If you have a partner though, your partner could be the source of this jolty disruption change in the home environment. But it doesn't have to be bad. I mean, I don't want you to think of this as a difficult, let's say super difficult story. Um, I mean, Venus is in Cancer at the time, and there's just sextiling from your ninth house, which is a Dharma house. So any disruptions can be very good for you. It's also a lucky house. So these would be lucky disruptions that are trying to play out in your story. And for some of you Scorpios, it could involve good lucky 
residential shifts involving foreign lands, because Venus is up here sextiling from Cancer at the time of this square. All right. Um, Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, and Ascendant. So guys, <laughs> you know, you've probably been having some challenges with third house things, with Saturn there since, oh, December of this year until November of 23, not November, March of 23. This sibling story could be very stressful for some Sages, not getting along, disagreeing with, arguing with your siblings. Or you could aunts, uncles, and cousins as well can belong there. And also you may be struggling with local neighborhood things. So who is it in a pandemic? No one's going out to restaurants or having any fun. You know, my ex-husband's a Sag rising and the, I, I just saw a, one of our favorite restaurants just opened back up in Vancouver where I'm moving. And I said, let's go, let's go to dinner at Fable when I get back. But you know, poor guy, he's a Sag rising. For him, it's been sucking very big time not to go out and have a social life. And so a lot of Sagittarius is very, very sociable, have found that neighborhood shit, excuse my language, neighborhood stuff, not working for them, right? And especially feeling gritty since December when Saturn made the neighborhood hard work, the neighborhood friends and connecting hard work. Now, if you would have short trips and travel, then Saturn is inhibiting or constricting there as well. Um, so you might love to take trips and travel. I bet you it hasn't been working out that well for you. <laughs> I even know that my Sagittarius son, ex-husband, had to cancel a Christmas trip because of COVID. So, you know, there's strict constriction. Now, Saturn also wants to dig in and create something strong here. If you want to teach, you want to mentor, you want to guide, you want to sell, you want to market, you want to create a website, this is all very good for you. Saturn will give you a solid foundation in that area. However, the disruption from Uranus in your sixth house is about the work you're doing. What, what ways is your, first of all, your health protocols and your work environment being jolted by Uranus since 2019, asking for change. And now Saturn is in the game this year and saying, okay, well, Saturn's digging into the third house. Um, <laughs> third, six, third, six. There's something coming out of your work environment for a lot of you Sagittarius is, that is going to jolt you into um, some kind of change. And Saturn digging in from the third is just weird because it's almost like, does this have to do with the local zone, right? Your neighborhood or your, uh, your local, you know, your siblings or your local friends. Oh, it could like be like, like a local friend tells you a new opportunity for work or health protocols. And it's a breakthrough thing. And it would come up sometime in the couple of weeks before and after the square on, on the, on June the 14th. Don't look at the June 20th. That's wrong. That's because I was advancing by days. Just ignore that. You know what? I'm going to confuse people. So I'm going back to the 14th so that you don't look at this later and go, what the heck? You know what I mean? I bet you some people will look at the date on that chart if you can see that and, and, and get confused. Okay, back to the 14th. I was with Sagittarius. Okay, so we're doing a Capricorn next. <laughs> Okay, I laugh because I'm so bad at this. I'm so bad at this navigation of the software. Sometimes it's laughable. Capricorn, sun, moon, and rising sign, especially rising sign. Saturn's digging in his heels in your money house. A lot of you Capricorn risings have been feeling really gritty around money and earnings since December when um, Saturn entered this house. And who isn't lately? But for you guys, it's really feeling burdens, maybe burdensome. And probably what you're doing to make money feels hard and tiring and difficult. And a lot of you Capricorns are wanting change. Well, stage left. Now, if you need to make money and you haven't been making money, Saturn will make you serious, perseverant, and hardworking, realistic, practical, and pragmatic, and you will do what you need to do, all right? But some of you might just be getting weary, and the money story is feeling gritty and hard, and it won't be until November, uh, March of 2003 that Saturn leaves that part of the chart, so keep that in mind. Um, you might have to work hard, but with Uranus in a square to Saturn from your fifth house of joy, fun, play, and pleasure, sexuality, romance, your children, your muse, your inspiration, your joy of life, and your money luck. 
a money luck break could liberate you from the dull drudgery of your work and making that money that you don't like. Um, a romantic love affair could spark and bring some joy, fun play, fun play and pleasure and get you out of the rut regarding your earnings and working so hard. Um, you could be having also some breakthrough with it, one of your children that also supports you to get out of the rut. But it's a combination of like Uranus wants fun and joy and and inspiration like where's the inspirited quality of your life are you on drone autopilot <laughs> and saturn is like over there you know he's saying like we need to make money guys we need to make money and we gotta like be serious and we're gonna take life seriously and we're gonna have our food shelter and water all lined up but uranus has none of that he doesn't care so what is he jolting you uh here from the beautifully lucky fifth house is certainly a good opportunity to buy a lottery ticket around this time because hey it's, it's money luck as well in that fifth house Aquarius, whoo, that's me, a sun, moon, and a rising sign. You guys are having a Saturn digging in the house of your body, your identity. Um, you're okay with this because it's, you know, we're born with, you know, Saturn as our Lord of our ascendant. Same with you caps back there. You, you have a good relationship with Saturn. So do you, we Aquarians. And so cap rising and Aquarius rising, we know Saturn. He's our guy. Um, for me as an Aquarius rising, it's been a lot of effort around reorienting my health. Um, that really started last spring when he ingressed into the uh, April, May, into Aquarius for a little bit, but now he's back again. And for me, it's been like really pulling out of overconsumption of wine, for instance, and getting very moderate to almost none in my life. So you kind of get serious about your health. A lot of us Aquarians are feeling that. And a serious about our identity and maturing up and being more authoritative. I mean, a client just texted me today or called me, phoned me. I haven't seen this woman since 2019. I expect I was going to pick up my phone and I don't even know how she got my number. But anyway, and you know, they expected me to call her back for a question. And I was like, this is my sober minded Saturday in my first house. If you would like to talk with me, please book with me on my calendar. I'm full until August, but I hope it'll work for you. And that's not how I used to be. I'm all like super nice and how can I help? And maybe I could fit you in, but Saturn's in my first house and I'm very practical and I'm very boundary right now. I'm choosing really strong boundaries, which Saturn can bring healthy, good walls, you know, good boundary space to our lives. Now, um, that, that said, we've got the Saturn here, Aquarians, um, until March of 23. And so we've got a long haul story of really sober, practical selfhood, but it's also mastery. Saturn brings mastery and authority and mastery of some area of your life. So, you know, I'm hoping to become a more masterful astrologer right now. I'm studying with my uh, original teacher for a second year uh, of my a Hellenistic training um, that I did in 2018. And for anyone who is an Aquarius rising with Saturn in your first house until 2023, it's where are you going to achieve mastery? Now, Uranus is disrupting things from the fourth house of home. So yeah, I'm moving, I'm moving through another move. This is from <laughs> this is from Montreal back to Vancouver uh, in July. And you know, <sighs> us Aquarius rising, that's a no man transit. Um, Uranus jolted us, uh, you know, in 2018, May to October, now he's back, and then he got there full-time in uh, 2019, March, and now he's back again, he's staying in, in our fourth house until 26, so 2026, so we can have a lot of change in where we live, don't set, don't think you're going to settle, a lot of Aquarius risings are going to be moving, now, this opposition was, it has been in play energetically since the beginning of the year, so it's about not getting settled into one place, but it's also maybe jolts of energy in the fourth house, big reveals and big revelations about family of pattern, family of origin patterns, ancestral patterns that could be breaking free of, you're breaking free of them. This is the house of the mother. Uh, sometimes if your mom's still with you and all of that, she's still alive, this could be breakthroughs in your relationship to your mom or things about your mom. All right. I'm going to get done in time. I think I am. Oh. Pisces, sun, moon, and rising sign. Um, look at this as um, a time in which your deep, soulful, ashram, convent, sage on the mountain top aspect of self is being fully developed. Saturn in your 12th house is a, a very hermit-like, and it, it's got started in December. We'll be there till March of 23. And you want to dig in to releasing old patterns of self uh, undoing, addictions, that kind of thing. And you're in a spiritual trance, at a very deep spiritual trance that you're regaining spiritual wisdom right now. And 
it's also very much about your dreams at night, your meditations. It's not very easy to touch base with Saturn in the 12th because he's invisible to your first house. But trust me, he's working on your behalf there. And at the same time, you have a square now this year, three passes. Remember, February, June, and December, but this June, June from Uranus. And Uranus in the third house of local neighborhood, uh, cousins, aunts, and uncles, and siblings, short trips and travel. And Uranus is going to bring a breakthrough from that area. Also online websites and marketing and social media selling. And Uranus is the god of the internet. Some of you Pisces risings will start to engage internet stuff social media stuff more than you've ever done to bring maybe passive revenue or revenue from foreign shores because the 12th house can be about barter and trade from foreign lands. Now, that said, you definitely if you have siblings, a lot of you Pisces will have a breakthrough coming with one of your siblings in the month of June um, or even into July. I mean, you're going to feel some kind of refresh the button story regarding a sibling, but because of a square, there may be some tension as a breakthrough happens, or a sibling may push you, right, and become the agent of a breakthrough. A sibling may be like um, a jolt or a catalyst or something uh, in your life over the next year and into especially this um, couple weeks around this June 14th event. Aries, Sun, Moon, and Ascendant, uh, Saturn's of you know, buckle down into your 11th house, uh, bringing you mastery, authority, hard work, legacy, practical, pragmatic, realistic, also constraint and uh, some sense of solitude in a very social house, you know, large groups of belonging and, you know, community that we choose by shared belief and value. But it's also great gains from one's financial, from one's career. And those great gains are very available to you now because Saturn will help you do the hard work to make those gains. And so for a lot of Aquarians, there's a lot of financial gain and reward from your livelihood and your career path over the next while until March of 2023, 23. And, um, you also probably have let go of some friends already since Saturn got there and more friends in social circles will be released in your life with Saturn there. Um, ones that don't really fit your hard boundary nose are picking up and wow. It's like a five alarm blaze out there. You guys hear the sirens outside? Shoot. I don't know what's going on in my hood. Um, Uranus is giving you money, Jules, and uh, new ways of making money and innovation with money. Second house, right? And maybe money from the internet. Yay for you guys. I love that. And breakthroughs with finances and also vocation, you know, self-worth, self-possession, your possessions, but vocation, voice, and vocare, the call, all in the house of speech, the second house. So sometimes people go, it's the house of your money that you earn, but I'm thinking it's a house of a deeper meaning. What's your true voice and vocation in the world? A lot of Aries are in refinement of that. And Uranus is trying to jolt and uh, disrupt the status quo. And the digging in of Saturn here might be, it's, it's so hard to let go of my community. It's so hard to let go of the ways I've been making great gains already. And Uranus is like, jolt, jolt, jolt. And then with Venus in the fourth house, great gains regarding real estate, by the way, or where you live or home. So keep that in mind. I probably should have left Venus in for everybody. Hmm. Guys, I need to stretch, sorry. <laughs> I did a long walk-ish for me, given I'm recovering from piriformis issues from moving heavy shit and um, amazing healing with my sister yesterday. I had pain-free sleep for the first time in three weeks. So yeah, my sister, uh, Nancy is a gifted healer. All right, Gemini, sun, moon, and ascendant. Yeah, okay, so look, it's a very interior thing where Uranus sits, right? Dreams at night, meditation, um, it can be hospitals, the same asylums, all of that. But you know, it's your inner life as well, a spiritual life. Kundalini can activate with Uranus. It's in the 12th house of moksha, liberation, enlightenment, one of them. Mm -hmm. Some of you guys are gonna have spiritual breakthroughs through Gemini, sun, moon, and rising sign. And Uranus is trying to jolt you and break you through there all the way through till 2026. And with this, this year's ongoing square, Saturn in the night, um, breakthroughs regarding foreign lands, wanting to live in a foreign land, to do with publications, book publishing, to do with higher education, to do with Dharma and your life purpose, to do with spiritual guides. Saturn in your, since December through the 2023 March, in your ninth house can bring you a sage-like spiritual guide. Like seriously, a guru, a sat guru, a guide, a sage, a mentor, 
So keep your eye on that. Jolting energy from Saturn, a brand new sage guide mentor from a foreign land <laughs> who helps you figure out your reality and helps you process Uranian energy in your 12th. Hey, you guys gonna be having some of your Gemini's huge downloads and revelatory insights because of Uranus there. Cancer, sun, moon, and rising sign. Hey, guys, look at this. It's a, it's a money story. <laughs> okay. Saturn wants everything to go the same old way in your money house. You're like getting legacy wealth here. You're organizing your portfolio. You're putting your 401k in order. You're wanting to be safe in your finances. Saturn helps you with that. Uh, he'll be there till 2023. However, sometimes when Saturn does stuff in the eighth house, he also can bring um, this sort of pull of constriction where you're afraid to take risks with your money. And that's fine. But with jolting energy from Uranus ongoing in 2021 and from your 11th house of pennies from heaven, windfalls, great gains from your career. A couple of things. Saturn might be wanting to keep things safe. And then Uranus is like, let's break out of the mold and let's make some money uh, from our career and take some risks. And maybe that involves investing in yourself, getting a bank loan, getting a, a business loan. And uh, Uranus is trying to win the day. However, for some of you cancer rising, you may have a windfall or a sudden financial bonus points. And it could come through a friend, 11th house, or through an ally, allies and benefactors wanting to support you in the world and the work you're doing. And you probably don't have to be so conservative and constricted in the way you handle your portfolio of wealth. Financial advisors can be Saturnian and in the eighth house. So uh, definitely be willing to lean on a financial advisor who could give you a breakthrough insight about how to do your money story differently. Leo, sun, moon, and ascendant. This gritty square is happening in the marriage zone. Um, marriage zone Saturn can really grow a marriage up. You know, it gets out of the, the sort of Pollyanna phase into a, the grid of making a marriage work. Saturn entered there in December and will be there until 2023. It can also break a marriage up. So you're going through a very difficult short transit, Leo, um, sun, moon, and ascendant. On the other hand, if you're single, it could be you engage in an enduring, long-lasting love affair with maybe an older person. Now, that energy in the seventh house can also bring business partnerships to you with established and authoritative people. This energy, though, is squaring all year three times, as we said, February, June, and December. But this one right now on June 14th, well, <laughs> you know, it's about the 10th house, your reputation in the world, your public status, you know. And, you know, people always think about career, but it's also married, divorced, single, right? What's your public status? What's your reputation? And it's also events that take place in the eye of the public. So why is your honest jolting you with disruption in the career and public eye zone? For some of you, Leo, sun, moon, and ascendants, you know, weddings happen in that 10th house, right? Because we see them get married. Often divorces we don't see, but, you know, it's this change of status. So this year is a tough one for a lot of you, Leos, regarding your existing long-term committed relationship, whether it's a legal spouse or not. And this June is a really critical turning point to see what you want to really do. Saturn retrograde is digging in its heels to make the marriage work and go back over old ground that you may have covered in 2021 February. If you have an audience or client base, then Saturn is there too. And you might be establishing you're trying to break out of the old patterns of the people that you serve, you know, who are your audience, clients, and others. Can you believe it, guys? Taurus, let's make sure that you get a little tension today. Oh, my God. So, Taurus, sun, moon, especially rising sign. This is happening for you guys in your first house where Uranus has been since 2019 um, spring, but also tiptoed in there, by the way, May through to October of 2018. I bring that up for you, Taurus, because this is a big deal. You know, this is your body, your whole being, the you of you, the first house. And, you know, Uranus is shaking up your identity. Um, honestly, he's trying to give you a new uh, lease on your life and who you think you are. It can also mean a lot of innervation. If, if, if you have an ascendant near 12 degrees-ish of Taurus, 13 degrees of Taurus, 14 degrees of Taurus, 15 degrees of Taurus, you're really feeling this um, energy of this square from your, um, Saturn. But nonetheless, it is an important one for you guys. And excuse my snotty nose, I'm having an allergy. 
I mean, to patch this in the next morning. So Saturn squares from the 10th house of career. Saturn wants you guys uh, to get really serious about your career, your ambitions, your status in the world, your reputation, what actions you want to take. Um, this Saturn story began in December of 2020 and doesn't end until March of 2023. So you've got a little bit of a long haul working with Saturn here and Saturn retrograding, going over old ground right now. Um, in some area of work or career, maybe you're going to get a job in a place you've worked at before. Maybe you're going to uh, go back to a new a old career uh, desire or hope and abandon something that you had been doing. In the meantime, the gist of the square that started in February, you know, there was one in February 17th, one on June 14th, one back way out in December 24th. Um, coming up, the whole year is somehow about you guys, you know, finding the the breaking the tension between the career version of you or the outer world or the success and achievement you in the eyes of the world and the radical reinvention of who you are with Uranus in the first house. You're going to want a lot of freedom. You want to bust out of the mold right now. You don't want to do it the way everyone says you should. You want to do it your way. You want to be inventive. You want to, you know, forge a new mold for who you are. And Saturn wants to do things the old way. So the new and the old are in conflict. Um, so you're going to find new ways to be successful in the world in what we would call usually career, but sometimes just your social status, your reputation, your social stature, your position, um, you know, the part of the chart where people see you doing really well. So you're going to find your own way. By the end of the year, you will carve out something that's outside the box of even what you expected of yourself back in 2017 before that early ingress of Uranus into mm -hmm. your first house in 2018. Alrighty, guys. So Taurus, look for breakthrough change in who you think you are that allows you to do what you really want to do in the world.